Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll just say first that I'm very humbled to be speaking in front of so many dedicated university staff and professors. Um, I'm, my name's Chris, and I'm from the International Center at Ritsune Kan's Bibako Kasatsu campus. So I've only been here for a few years, and generally I work with students, uh, say solving a few problems here and there, uh, taking in applications, um, doing translation and interpretation once in a while, but in the last two years, uh, myself and some other staff members have worked on a project to just redo the entire English website. And part of that was just because started from a question of how can we really show the advantages that Ritsumikon has? So how can we show to the world that you know, we have these programs, that we have these facilities, that we have this student support? And I think this draws on a lot of the sort of points brought up this, this morning that you know, we have these great advantages, but if you don't have a way to present them, then it may not seem like he has those things. So it becomes a bottleneck. So that's sort of the overall uh, theme of my presentation. And especially when everybody's doing such great work to make sure that students come in. So I think one of the other sort of themes of the whole presentation is just that thinking from the perspective of our guests and not what we want to tell them. So thinking what students need, not what we want you know, to tell them about their own, the programs that they may be interested in, and also for researchers or visitors to our university. So those are sort of the two themes that I touch on mostly. So I'll start with one, the first question, and this is just supposed to be sort of a fun presentation, so I'll uh, just take it a bit lightly. So what are we telling them? Uh, what's the point? Is it clear or is it too much? So it's just to do with purpose, uh, clarity, and quantity. So first, what's the point? So if you're going to make something like a website or a pamphlet or some sort of promotional material, uh, you have to have a goal behind it. And I found that sometimes this isn't the case. So the example here, in all humility, I'll bring up to the Ritsumeikan pamphlet. Uh, it starts here, and it says Ritsumeikan University International Admission Guide. But if you actually look inside, there's only about 10% of the contents are about actual international admissions, how to apply, and who to contact. A lot of it has to do with G30, it's making history, and those kind of things. So this is just something that, um, you know, trying to get everybody to think about having a purpose behind, you know, putting the money towards these projects. Uh, who is it for? Again, that goes with purpose. So you're targeting students, researchers, or maybe partners overseas. And what are the returns? So is it clear? Uh, this one's very simple. I found this. Uh, on, I just searched a lot of Japanese websites and I found that I couldn't read anything in this document. So it looks great, there's lots of colors, but uh, it seems like it's just been ripped out of a previously made pamphlet and just put online. So if they can't read the content, then it's a bit meaningless. Um, so is it too much and where do I start? So I hope uh, one of these diagrams is Ritsumeikan, but another one is from another university in Japan, and I hope they're not in attendance today, but um, <laughs> if you look at these diagrams, you don't really know where, what they're trying to say, and in, on Ritsumeikan's case, this is about G30, um, it seems like it's trying to tell you everything, literally, and what could be done better is just summarizing with the main points and giving a clear, like, clear address to where you can research more information if you want it. So, simply put, less is more. This is the previous diagram on the left, simplified into what I think is a bit more coherent form. Uh, it's not supposed to impress anybody, it's just an action plan for the university strategy. So I don't think it needs you know, the color and the uh, you know, you know, design element as much. So it's just a simple you know, goal one, goal two, and here's what we're gonna do. And this is an example from my university, uh, University of British Columbia. That's exactly what they do. So next is how are we telling them? And this has to do with how connected we are in the world. So how connected are we to, say, networks, internet, um, overseas students? And we're dealing with international education, so we better be connected internationally. Uh, how much money does it cost to carry this out? And what kind of image are we, we are conveying? So are we connected? When you think about Facebook, and YouTube, which I'm sure everybody here knows about, there's 500 million users nowadays, and many of these users are young people. 
So a lot of the time they get their information from these sources and then they hear the name and maybe go to the website. Uh, the Ritz Make on Facebook group has 1,000 members and this is current, uh, maybe prospective students and graduated students. And it operates in 70 languages as well. So whether we choose to embrace them or not um, may depend on how many people learn about your university. And YouTube, uh, we're using this now sort of as a way to do promotional videos or just sending it to current students, uh, videos of the events they attended so that they can enjoy it as well. But two billion views a day, that's a lot of traffic. Uh, is it worth the money? So this just sort of analyzes a few different mediums for promotions. And so paper-based is a lot of what uh, I guess universities here are doing from my perspective. And I would say the bad things about that are you know, design costs, printing costs, shipping costs, and it's hard to update. Once you've made something, you can't remake it right away. It looks great. It's great for international fairs. Uh, it's great to hand out. It's something you know, physical that somebody can carry. But I would also argue that it needs to be complemented with digital. And so the bad part about that is design costs are very expensive. You need a lot of expertise and there's issues with compatibility. So if you don't have, say if you have a student from uh, you know, Indonesia or something and we have the, maybe they don't have the quickest internet connection compared to say other nations and they have to access this heavy website, that's gonna be difficult. Um, so there's some issues there, but you can also update it on the minute. Uh, it reaches every single person in the world who has an internet connection and that's much cheaper than sending pamphlets overseas or sending people to international affairs. So I would say it's a big investment in the beginning, but it does pay off in the end. And there's also no limit to the data. So once you make a pamphlet, you, you know, you're limited to those pages, and that's why you try and fit as much information in each page, but online you can spread it out as much as you like. So what kind of image are we sending to the world? Uh, is it a modern one, or is it sort of thrown together, like the top photo. Um, so I argue this because nowadays, you know, we're moving into uh, e-learning, as was mentioned this morning, uh, things like that, and just online applications, these kind of more modern, you know, digital ways of accessing the university, but, and also because Japan is so connected to science and engineering, high technology, leading edge, uh, I would argue that if you're trying to promote a highly technological program, having this bottleneck in sort of design accessibility that's based on technology is a bit of a, you know, <laughs> it's a bit of a step backwards. Um, so is it coherent? And that's sort of to do with design and having an accessible page that's really, you know, people can come into it really easily so they can understand it right away. And is it reliable? So if you have a digital page or a digital uh, media, an online site, then everybody knows where the information is all the time. And it'll always be there as long as your internet's functioning um, and they always know where to find it. So who is in charge? And this has to do with management. So it's three topics, specialization, quality control, and efficiency. So specialization, has to do with sort of the person that's working on the project. Um, they have the knowledge, say, of promotions and of the university's materials. So they can devote their work to telling the world about it. But right now it seems like a lot of offices are dividing the two. So they have people like me who I, my main you know, goal is to, say, translate uh, scholarship, you know, entrance examination uh, qualifications. But I'm also doing this on the side, so I can't devote my work to it. Whereas if you have somebody that's really spending their time and putting their effort and their heart into it, then you will really increase the quality and the efficiency. Uh, negotiation abilities, this is big because it's an industry where prices vary a lot. So if you're designing you know, a pamphlet or a website or some sort of promotional materials, the company you're dealing with may want to do as little work as possible for as much money as possible. If you don't have that information, then you don't know what you're paying. Uh, language, that's specifically to do with, say, English speakers or like information marketed at English speakers or international programs. So if you have lots of errors that aren't checked by, say, a native speaker or, um, you know, just looks sloppy in some way, it may give 
an institute of higher learning, a bit of a negative image. So quality control and uh, specifically design. So this is a few screenshots from our website. And as you'll see, the four on the left are all sort of standardized in terms of uh, design. And the ones on the right are sort of, they fall outside that. So a lot of these pages have been created. Um, the ones on the left, we had a little more control over. And the ones on the right were sort of, if possible, bring them into the design. And they still function. But uh, as much as possible, it'd be nice to have them all looking the same. Uh, flow. So this is just a sort of experiment that I did. I went to a bunch of universities as sort of a student wishing to apply for a program. Just very simple, any program. Uh, the one on the left, this is actual Japanese university sites. It took me about 14 pages to get to the information. And half of that was going backwards to search. Uh, on the one on the right, it was very good actually. It took me just about a minute to find it. So this is, that's where the difference comes in standardization and really thinking about how to allow people into your university. So inefficiency, uh, repetition, just recreating the same information over and over and putting it in a different spot. Say if two pamphlets have the same sort of overlapping information, I've seen that. Uh, amount, do you need one page or do you need many pages? And often the case, you need one page and you can send people to your website and that's where all the information is if they wish to see it. Uh, just skip one. So just as a sort of summary of how to make, this is sort of from the industry, just a many sort of shared opinions about how to make a great pamphlet and just generalizes to promotions in general. So just usually it's about recruiting people to support your cause or advertising a new program or idea. So if you don't have a purpose, then you're a bit lost. Uh, get their attention. These are some fun students from Ritz and Akon. Uh, I love this photo. But catchphrases, provoking ideas, images and colors, things that bring the people in and want to look at, your, at uh, what your university has to offer. So make it easy. Contact information and action plans. Those are the two main things that you need, but sometimes I don't see them. So contact information, if something's confusing, that should be the first thing that people should be able to find. Uh, often it's left, left out, surprisingly. No clutter. Less clutter means it's easier to find the, the top two. Uh, communicating clearly. This is pretty straightforward, unlike the photo. Uh, just making it easy to read. Guiding the reader, making sure that they know where to look, rather than having a lot of text. Uh, narrow columns, like a newspaper. It's easy to read. Images, of course. Captions. And conveying benefits to them, not features. So what can they get out of it? So this is just a quote I kind of like that says, you must try to leave out the parts that people skip. And if you think you're doing good by adding a paragraph into your design, then chances are people are going to read right over it. They're not going to look at it. Uh, so this is a written make on pamphlet. It's very text heavy. And just going by the four points mentioned, uh, it does have a purpose. It sort of outlines the graduate school. But it does use paragraph style, and it's a bit overwhelming. You don't know where to start reading. It's a little bit small and nothing in particular stands out. So my requests are a continued move to online media. It's an investment that we need to make now that will pay off very well in the future, especially as more and more universities move this way. Uh, quality control of marketing through central management. This is having somebody standardize the quality rather than having separate departments uh, you know, create their own promotional materials. That gives the university as a whole more of a you know, coherent function. They, it seems like they're working together better. And benefits, I'll just let you read those for a second. Um, so mostly just worldwide access, that's one of the biggest ones, and unlimited quality, quantity. So this is the old site that we had. Uh, as you can see, very text heavy, just a few pictures and not really too spectacular design-wise. And now we've moved to this one, which is a lot more uh, friendly for the new users. One of the themes we used was picture yourself at RU. And that's sort of to bring in university or prospective students into our site. So we have a lot of programs, especially our short-term programs. We have a you know, five-week program that we run in the summer where a lot of students look at this site and the SKP one on the bottom right, that's a one-year short-term program that students sort of, they look at this and they think, oh, that looks great, you know, I, I really want to go there, that looks so fun. 
Um, but if you don't convey this sort of you know, feeling that the program has or the facilities, the support functions, then how are they not supposed to know that your program is any better than other universities? So we had a lot of hits, uh, a lot of positive compliments, and one or too few misses. But um, as you'll see, the traffic has increased by about two times. And that's sort of, that's, that red line down the middle is where going from the old to the new. So just uh, finishing off with the question, since I'm looking at it from a Canadian perspective or a Western perspective, and also experience in Japan, I'm curious to know how other people think about what I'm saying today. So if you have any questions or sort of comments from your own cultural perspective about how to convey these ideas, then I'd love to hear them. Okay, thank you very much.